All right, today we are picking up with the industrial industrial revolution and how it begins in Europe. So the dawn of the industrial age started in Britain about the mid 1700s roughly. Um, it is a very long and slow process but really that starts because there are new sources of power that are going to begin to replace people and animals as sources for power. So this industrial revolution is a turning point in history. Around 1750 uh, people had worked the land with simple handmade tools. They lived in simple cottages. Um, for lighting, they had fires and candles. They made their own clothes and they grew their own food. Very little was known about the outside world, outside of their homes. People tended to stay fairly close to the village that they were born in and that kind of thing. Um, but rural life begins to disappear as people begin to leave, leave their homes in search of better jobs. Um, the cities offered a um, wider variety of jobs and um, with maybe a little bit la less labor intensive. But by 1850s, many villages are going to grow into industrial towns and cities and people begin to buy their own food, buy food and clothing rather than making it themselves. Um, they begin to work indoors. Homes became multi-storied, more than one story. And the reason for this is because of the agricultural revolution. So that's what kind of kicks off the entire industrial revolution. We wouldn't have had it without the agricultural revolution. The agricultural revolution comes about because of improved methods of farming. And some of this came from um, the Dutch. In the 1600s, the Dutch were using dikes, and these were earthen walls um, that basically held back the sea so that you could use that land that's exposed now to farm. Um, they had larger fields then, they could better use their land, and um, they began using fertilizer. Uh, they used animal waste in order to help renew the soil and make it better so they didn't have to do like a three crop rota rotation and that kind of stuff. The British in the 1700s will also be a part of the agricultural revolution. They start looking at crop rotation. Um, they create or invent the seed drill which planted seeds in a row rather than scattering them um, and this makes it much more efficient. Uh, they bred stronger horses for labor and they begin breeding new kinds of sheep and cattle that would be fatter and more more meat on them. <clears throat> the enclosure movement will also start and this enclosure movement is a process of taking over and fencing off land that had formerly been shared by the peasant farmers and this was a way to gain pasture land for your sheep or your cattle for your meat meat animals. What they do is they combine the strip farms of, of medieval times to more efficiently use the land. Well, this is going to force the smaller farmers out of business, and so they need to find jobs, so they leave to go find work in the cities. Well, then there's this huge population explosion in the cities. In many parts of, of Europe, populations are going to double in just a hundred years. It, it's not very frequently that that happens, where your population explodes like that. This is really impressive because of the amount of diseases that were out there in this time period. Um, it's due, the population explosion is due more to the fact that there was a declining death rate rather than increased birth rates. People were still having the same amount of kids at the same amount of rate, but people were dying less. And that's because of better hygiene. Um, there's a reduced risk of, of famine because of more food available, there's better sanitation, there's better, better medical care. So all of these things are going to lead into that. So our agricultural revolution leads to an energy revolution because they go from having human and animal muscle to water mills and windmills that will begin to power things. And then eventually coal is discovered in 1712 and coal is going to um, lead to steam engines and all kinds of stuff. So, the country of Britain is going to lead the way with the Industrial Revolution. Well, why Britain? Well, Britain has a lot of natural resources. It has a lot of coal and it has a lot of iron. It also has a fairly large population. Its human resources um, are going to help a lot. The agricultural resource agricultural revolution is going to free up a lot of labor in Britain and so they begin to think of new technologies and that kind of stuff they go to the cities and, and now there's a need for um, new and improved things 
So this new technology, um, Britain's going to be the center of the scientific revolution focusing attention on the physical world. Um, economic conditions are going to um, change as well because of the, the, the changes in capital and demand, the amount of money they, they have and the deba demand for it. They also, Britain has also a very large empire overseas. It has this growing overseas empire which leads to a lot of wealth. Well, they have this expendable money that they now can do things with. And because of their population explosion, they have a huge demand for goods. Also the political and social conditions in Britain at this time is what's going to lead to them being sort of the center of the, the industrial revolution. They had a stable government. They had a strong navy. Um, their upper class did not reject money made by entrepreneurs like some other Europe European nations did. Um, other European European nations, oh my goodness, um, looked down on it. That if you had to earn your money to become rich, it was kind of like dirty money. But the upper class in Britain actually actively participated in it for the most part. So they weren't quite so... I guess snooty about it, um, that it wasn't like family money or inherited money, that you earned your money, you earned your way. Um, so there's that that difference. Also, um, the religious attitudes, uh, the, the British um, religious temperament, I guess, is that they stressed thrift and hard work, and so that kind of played in right with the entrepreneurs and the, the hardworking middle class. This is going to be the age of iron and coal. Iron is going to be needed to build machines and, and steam engines and all, railroads, all kinds of stuff. Um, but to get high quality iron requires a lot of fuel. And previously that had been wood. By the 1700s though, Britain had exhausted its tree supply. They were running out of trees to burn. And so they turned to coal. And that's why coal is going to be so much more important. Um, you still have to mine for it, but it, it burns hotter than wood and so then uh, you can get more use out of it. The textile industry will also be booming at this time. Britain's largest industry was the textile industry and textiles is like cloth, clothing. Um, in the early part of its industrial history, the textile industry in Britain in the 1600s, uh, cotton was imported from India and it becomes very, very popular. It's lightweight, it's natural, it breathes, um, and demand for cotton is going to grow. And so inventors come up, come up with devices to more quickly produce cotton cloth. And some of the major inventions included things like, <coughs> excuse me, included things like the flying shuttle, which was created by John Kai and it was used in weaving. Um, another one is the spe spinning jenny. Um, James Hargreaves is going to invent that and this can spin many threads at a time so reducing the amount of labor. And the water frame invented by Richard Arkwright which is going to use water power to speed up the spinning process so it becomes even less time to do it. With all this, there's a revolution in transportation. The need to more cheaply and to do it more quickly to move goods from one side of the country to another or from the mill to the factory or from the producer to the consumer. Um, this is all going to lead to changes in transportation too. Turnpikes were bri privately built roads that charged a fee to travelers who used them. So basically you're paying for the use of the of the road and that fee that you paid would help in the upkeep of it you know fixing potholes and and that kind of damage and that kind of stuff canals are going to link towns on rivers or coastal ports to more easy access um, stronger bridges and upgraded harbors will also be a part of this transportation revolution in terms of land transportation the steam lo locomotive is going to lead to the growth of railroads you can get there faster now, so we need to be able to have more um, more rail in order to get to places. And then on the sea, water access steamboats will also become very, very important in this transportation revolution. So in our next one, we'll look at um, what some of the, the hardships that come along with this because changes do happen very quickly.